Rub up your engines! Tracy Balthazar says, Scotty, what year should I avoid for used Tacomas? Is a four or six cylinder better? Auto or manual? Well, you want a four cylinder manual, it's going to last the absolute longest. There's no arguing that. Now, it depends what do you want, you know? If you're going to tow stuff, you're better off with the V6 than you are with the four cylinder. My son's got a four cylinder and a V6 Tacoma because he got a boat and he needed the four wheel drive six cylinder for pulling a big old boaty box. But he still has the four cylinder, that's their regular work truck. What you want to avoid, are early mid 2000s some of them had frame rock but it's real easy to tell Toyota replaced a lot of them free you just crawl under with a hammer hit the frame if it's all rusted and crunchy don't buy it stay away from it but if it's solid then it's one of the good ones some of them rusted none of the Nate model ones did but crawl under there look at the frame hit it with a hammer if it goes crunch crunch don't buy it you don't want to buy a car with a rotted frame and some of them did have rotted frames G-Man 225 said did any Acura Legends have manual transmission yeah the customers one in Houston it was a screw they haven't for ages because uh, you know 96% of Americans drive automatic transmissions there's no market for it so they're not going to do it but they did and they were screaming cars boy you could really race around in those the Acura Legend was Acura's first big luxury car and I mean those things were fun to drive they're old now but I mean the original ones they had rubber timing belts interference engines they had some maintenance you had to do on them but they were real screamers for the day Chuck Brown says Scott I got an 05 Nissan Altima the AC doesn't work and the compressor doesn't spin in. what could it be well it could be dozens of things but the first thing you'd want to do is hook up gauges to the system have a mechanic hook up gauge see if it's low on refrigerant if you're low on refrigerant the computer will not allow the compressor to spin it won't let it turn itself on so it could be as simple as just low on refrigerant but it could also be the compressors locked up you got a problem in the electronics could be lots of things but pray it's just low on refrigerant because they all leak a little bit of refrigerant over time so you got to refill them every once in a while as the old refrigerant leaks off because once the refrigerant gets below a certain parameter usually about anywhere between a third and half the computer will shut it off and it won't let it run anymore so just pray you're low on refrigerant that's often what it is Chevy truck says I got 86 C10 the AC is not getting cold the hot side is getting hot but the cold side isn't getting cold if the hot side's getting hot you grab that hot line it's getting hot but the cold side isn't getting cold I doubt that it's just low on refrigerant you probably have a clogged evaporator or a bad expansion valve in the system hot side's hot meaning it's pumping the hot fluid through but it's not making it through coming to the cold side so something is restricting it often it's a clogged evaporator or a clogged expansion valve have those checked out now unfortunately we used to be able to check them easy because AC systems used to have three or four ports to check the pressures now some only have one and most only have two so somewhat educated guys work even for a mechanic figuring out what's wrong because all the test ports aren't there anymore they don't want them to fix it cheaper they just want you to replace the whole system and spend a fortune. Kanoa Demori says, is the 2018 Corolla better than a 2018 Civic? You pick probably the two best little cars. It depends what you really want. Both of them can last a really long time. The Civics are generally a little more zippier than the Corollas. The Corollas generally have engines that don't have as much horsepower as the Hondas and the Hondas generally drive a little bit quicker a little bit zippier corner but from my experience nothing lasts longer than a Toyota Corolla but I'll tell you one thing Toyota makes the best CVT transmissions there's some of theirs have a launch gear and then the CVT transmission the CVTs are better in the Toyotas than the Hondas Roblox George says is Audi A5 good well it's good if you like spending a lot of money at the Audi dealer those things are one of the biggest endless money pits out there as they age they're fun to drive they're zippy but especially the ones that have that two liter engine in it they end up burning oil blowing up they turbocharge them too much pressure you know they're beautiful looking cars now if you price around you generally find you can get used ones pretty cheap and the reason you get them cheap is because they're money pits and nobody wants them as they age 5gt says scotty just bought a 2006 sequoia limited with 244,000 miles on it for six grand new engine did i get a good deal well that depends <laughs> How long it lasts? Now, you say it's got a new engine. I can just about guarantee you the engine isn't brand new. It's probably a used engine. Sometimes you can get remanufactured ones, but most people just put used engines in, you know, the history of, right? They cost an awful lot of money. So six grand, the price is fine. But with that mileage, it just depends on 
is it going to last, you know? And how are you going to use it, too? Those are the biggest gas hogs Toyota ever made. So, if you're the type of person that doesn't put a lot of miles on, 20,000 miles a year, you put a lot less than that, you might be happy. But if you do a lot of high mileage with that kind of mileage on it already, something eventually is going to break, and it's going to use up an awful lot of your money putting gasoline in it. Funny Wind says, Good morning, my 08 Toyota Matrix, 174,000 miles. I changed all the engine mounts, but it's not smooth when it's idling. All right. Here's the thing. Lots of things can make it not smooth when it's idling. The first thing you want to do is watch my video, make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. Sometimes cleaning the throttle, cleaning the MAF air sensor, voila, away it goes. Also, look for vacuum leaks. Sucking air when you're idling, it's going to vibrate. Now, if it's not those, a lot of times you'd live with it because as they age, a lot of times the torque converters inside the automatic transmissions get a little bit worn and they'll shake it idle, but they'll run perfectly otherwise. My 94 Celica does that, and I'm not going to take it apart. Take the transmission off, put another torque converter on the old thing, I just drive it that way. And if I don't like it, I put it in neutral when I come to a stop. Watch out, the Chinese are at it with electric cars with longer range. Neo, this Chinese company, is launching their 150 kilowatt electric car that has a six 100 mile range, they say. 600 miles. Now that's something. Now, this is a semi solid state battery. It's the Chinese company, Cattle, that's making the battery. Not Cattle like Moo Moo, but C A T L. They're working on solid state. They don't have a solid state one yet. This is, they say, a semi solid state. Now, who knows if it's going to last, if it's going to go. Will it really go 600 miles? But if this Neo does go that far, it's a big game changer for electric cars. If you got one that can go really 600 miles, that's going to do something. Then people can actually take trips on the things. They can drive 500 something miles and then charge it up at night and then go again. That's why I tell people, hold your horses if you're thinking about buying an electric car. We don't know how that stuff is going to pan out. Which battery is going to be successful? Which ones are going to last the longest? Which ones are going to cost cheaper and still last? Are some of the ones that are cheaper not going to last? Are some of the expensive ones, like this big fancy one that can go 600 miles, is that going to last? You're not going to know until they've been out a while, so be like me. Sit in the sidelines and wait. Well, finally, somebody has sense. Dow has selected a Texas site for small nuclear reactors to make electric power. Now, this is a four reactor project they're going to make in South Texas. And Dow Chemical is doing it to grow its production there and reducing emissions. Now, finally, people have common sense. You want to make clean power use nuclear, right? Now, in this case, it's Dow Chemical. It's a private thing. It's not a government thing. And they're realizing, hey, you want cheap, efficient energy, you're going to have to go nuke if you don't want to pollute. Anything else is going to cost too much money. It's not going to last long. Windmills only windmill for so many years, then they break. Solar panels, same thing. They only last so many years, then they break. The nukes, they can last an awful long time. You know, most of the nukes in the United States are over 40 years old, and they're still working perfectly fine. You're never going to get that out of solar panels, wind turbines, and of course, it's permanent power. You don't have to wait on the wind or the sun. The nukes just keep going and going and going. And these smaller ones, they say they're more efficient, but cheaper to make. It only makes sense to do this. Stop this fear mongering of, oh, it's new. We're all going to die in an explosion. No, they have better cooling systems. Most of the newer ones are using sodium instead of water because the sodium cools better passively than a water system that needs circulation pumps running. People finally need to wise up. If Dow Chemical's doing it, hey, the government should get involved in this more instead of this fantasy wind and fantasy solar panel nonsense. Well, the scientists in California have this thing called the Captura facility, and it's going to capture carbon, they say, and it can remove gigatons of carbon dioxide from the ocean. Captura Corporation is a spinoff of Caltech, and those guys know what they're doing. They're pretty intelligent people, right? They're planning on making a aquatic facilities in the middle of the ocean that can take carbon dioxide out of the ocean using solar and various chemical reactions that they've figured out to get the carbon dioxide out of the water. They end up with pure carbon dioxide that they can use for industrial purposes that they can sell. And it's all internal. It's kind of interesting stuff these scientists come to. Who knows if they'll be able to scale it up, but here's how it works. The process begins by bringing in a filtered stream of seawater where electrodialysis technology they have creates an acid. So they're creating all this stuff from the water. They're not have to bring anything in. Then the acid's added to the ocean water that gets the carbon dioxide. Then you use a gas liquid contractor and a vacuum pump 
to get liquid carbon dioxide, which they can sell and use in industrial purposes. Carbon dioxide is used for all kinds of stuff. So who knows? Maybe in the future we're gonna have these little floating cities in the ocean taking the carbon dioxide out. If they're using sunlight for powering them, like they say they can, and they create their own acid to do it and reuse everything and aren't polluting, hey. Pretty interesting. Now, who knows if they can scale it up? Who's going to pay for this stuff, right? But it's a pretty interesting idea to take carbon dioxide out of the ocean. There's all the carbon dioxide, of course, it's creating heat problems and stuff. You get rid of it. Kind of an interesting idea. Now, like I say, we don't know if they're going to be able to really do it in mass production. The scale might be so expensive that it doesn't make any sense to do, but they're working on it. The guys at Caltech are pretty smart dudes. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.